There's your other one. I don't know. Monday night we camped out there on Cheyenne Mountain. When right at the base of Cheyenne Mountain is uh, Fort Carson. It's an uh, army post. So it was kind of neat Tuesday morning waking up and you know, hear the cannon fire and revelry playing in the background while we're making breakfast. Sun. Say what? It's a Beatles song. How's the rest of it go? We finished watching the sunrise, broke camp, got some supplies from Colorado Springs, and we headed to the mountains. Kind of cutting across the, the mountains and stuff to get over towards Victor to start our trip on this one here. We uh, kind of pulled into the, the little town of uh, Victor, and it's kind of amazing the uh, the uh, the old towns how they're out there in the middle of nowhere and they have uh, uh, a lot of people. You know, a lot of people live there, and uh, well, I say a lot, no, a lot, but you know, quite a few people live out there, and they they uh, I guess they do what they need to survive out in that area, and they. The old buildings is kind of cool to see, all the old uh, buildings and how they uh, keep a lot of the old buildings and just kind of fix them up and, and make them where they can use them on and on without just totally tearing everything down. But uh, and then we kind of took a ride over to Cripple Creek. We were kind of looking around to you know see what was in Cripple Creek. We had some extra time before we needed to search for a campsite. And uh, we drove down through Cripple Creek and that was the first time I've been to Cripple Creek. Cripple Creek, but it was amazing how they took a uh, an old town like that, and, and uh, there's a lot of casinos there, but there's a lot of people like going to casinos, and uh, and but they went, instead of letting the town just go to waste, they put all those casinos in there and built up the town, and it looks like they've got, you know, good business going on in that area, and there's still a lot of people lives around Cripple Creek. It was a good drive. We were looking for a place to camp, and we were striking out. We went down this one road, talked to this couple, and they pointed us back to the Gold Camper Road. So we went on up there, and we ended up having to drive probably like about four or five miles down the road before we even came to the National Forest, and there was nowhere to camp, nowhere to camp. There's a few, once we got in the National Forest, we saw these little, these little pull-off spots, and we thought, you know, okay, well, maybe that's a good spot. Well, you know, okay, if we can't find anything else, we'll come back to it. Well, as we, we were just about to turn around and go back, and we came up on the first, uh, the first tunnel, which is old train, uh, train tunnel from back in the old uh, gold rush days for this area. And as soon as we came to the out the other side of it, it was really neat. Just right there was an open area. It was a national forest property and everything. There had been uh, uh, some campsites there before, and we drove around to it and we set up camp and. 
and uh, we had everything ready and, and had dinner and everything before it even got dark. After looking for campsites, multiple places, we struck out. So we decided to go on down Gold Camp Road, get into the National Forest to camp. So we're going to go down here and get set up. This is where I'll park the Yukon overnight. And then uh, come back and get it on Thursday. But. Glad we held out a little while. No kidding. Already a fire pit? Yeah. We can right. dump the coals in there. <coughs> okay. Get to work. Are you, I'll go ahead and are you gonna leave that here or are you gonna park up there in the morning? I'll park it down here or down there somewhere. Probably right here. <coughs> you know what I just just a thought? Yeah. Why don't we drive back out and ride this one back in? Well, we're going to park it. This is a perfect place to park. Alloway, it's out of sight. I think this is quite the place. It's not really but, noticeable. But it may be... It'll be fine there, I guess. The only thing I was thinking is if it rains real bad. So I got a winch and pull cool drive for. Well, it ends up down there. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking maybe you want to park up there, but... It's a view. This will work. For camping out tomorrow night, we start hearing a lot of thunder. Let's pedal back and get it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be nice to sleep to the ambient noise, the river. I'm going to say, we got plenty of time. If you make up the mountain, we're coming down. It's still pretty got plenty of time. Might just be a day adventure. Come back and camp here again. Is that what you're saying? Oh no, no, <clears throat> going into Colorado Springs. Yeah. Come back and get this and go. Yeah. Drive it on down <laughs> the rest of the way. I don't know about that. So we got up the morning of September 18th, it's a Wednesday morning, and we broke camp, we got everything all ready to go, and then we uh, rode through, we saw a few mountain sites on the way. All ready? Yep. One thing uh, I learned from a guy that rides a lot is uh, the cadence is more important. Speed, so we start going up the hills and stuff, be sure you shift down to low gear.
quite a few of them. I haven't done as many as Jared has, but, uh, you know, quite a few. Uh, we've done a lot of 14 years before and stuff, and, and getting ready for them has always been a challenge in a way, too. Uh, uh, we've uh, always tried to be prepared ahead of time and stuff, and and we always packed. We've learned from experience on packing what to take and stuff, so we, uh, on this one here, it kind of caught me by surprise. It was, uh, uh, we had our bikes, and uh, in the trail that we chose to take to uh, go to the top of the mountain was, uh, uh, it was it was a pretty rough one, but it was washed out a lot. There was a lot of boulders, a lot of rocks. There was no way to uh, do much riding up to uh, get to the top of it. It was uh, uh, it was really uh, it took a lot more out of me on this trip than any other trip because of the. Uh, pushing the bike up for the first three-fourths of the way up the mountain. We had to make a decision on what road we were going to go up. <clears throat> According to my map, 370C shows it, it went up towards Almagre Mountain. And it didn't look too bad on the map, but it turns out to be one of the roughest four-wheel drive roads in Colorado. And we ended up having to push our bikes up most of it. It took forever to go up this mountain. It was miserable. Mm. 